Hey guys, um, I'm going to go over a few things. I'm thinking about starting up a few uh, few of these videos, just going over a uh, couple of the um, setup effects uh, and how the chancy is actually working um, more so than you know do this to cause the car to do this. Uh, it, we can all read the manual, um, but I think a lot of the time, uh, a lot of us forget about these things some of us may not even know about these things or realize what the chassis is actually doing um, throughout the turns you know uh, how it loads unloads um, and why that causes uh, chassis setup changes to uh, to affect the car the way they do um, in this quick video I think I'm just going to go over uh, caster um, and of course, uh, anti-dive, uh, kick up, pro squat, anti squat. Um, they're pretty close, uh, in a lot of ways, um, and they affect each other. Um, so we'll take a look at those. Um, first thing is caster. Um, caster is essentially, and, and I don't really have the tire off cause I want to be able to load and unload the chassis for you, but, uh, I do have, uh, my spare chassis here um, but what I want to show is uh, caster is is essentially the uh, angle at which your front kingpin or your front suspension um, steering works um, in this case you can see on my spare chassis that there is this is about as centered as it gets right there, but you can see that my screwdriver running through um, the pickup for the steering blocks uh, actually is at an angle towards the rear of the car. What this does is it changes the uh, uh, changes the angle of the steering under load versus um, when it's flat. What happens is, uh, if you want more steering uh, coming off of the corner, of course the manual says you want to set this straight up, um, or closer to straight up, removing caster, um, putting the rear, or putting the top towards the rear increases caster, putting the top towards the front decreases caster. When it's set up towards the rear, it'll actually be less responsive up front. Um, and then you'll find that uh, you're also going to have reduced steering coming off of a corner. Um, the way this works is um, when the chassis loads, meaning the car actually dives into the corner, you're on the brakes, you'll, your front end nose dives. As it nose dives and the angle of the overall chassis changes in relation to the ground, um, it's going to stand this sh straighter, okay? So the more that it stands this up straighter, the more steering you're going to have um, because your steering is actually on a flatter, uh, try and think of the words here, but uh, it's on a, a flatter rotation when you're spinning side to side. And I'll show that in a minute here. Um, and then, of course, as you get off of the turn or, and get back onto the throttle, um, your car is actually going to naturally want to sit down in the rear. And as you do that, then, of course, the chassis angle towards the relative angle or plane of the, uh, uh, the surface that you're racing on is changing again. And as such, it's actually going to be laying this top back as you're getting on the throttle. Again, as I said, you know, the more caster, the more that the top is towards the rear, um, the less steering you're going to have overall, uh, or responsiveness, really. Um, but coming off the corner, it's going to reduce your steering. So if you find yourself in a situation where you've got too much steering coming off the corner and your car is actually trying to loop, um, you can help control that by actually adding caster. Um, and again, same thing, if your car's not, uh, not responsive enough, 
um, or you don't have enough steering coming out of the corner, you can lay this or lean this forward again, reducing your caster to give you more steering. Um, to show you what it's actually doing, let's take a look at chassis with the tires on it. And first off, this chassis is set up, so there is caster in it. But the if you think about it this way, okay, your pivot angle is leaning forward or actually straight up and down. You're going to have more contact patch here on the tires when it goes to turn. The more that you lean this up, the more that you, your top of your tires is leaning and not so much the front of the tires. And what that's going to do is reduce that amount of steering. Um, it's really hard to to wrap your head around it sometimes uh, without seeing a, a mental picture of it and unfortunately the chassis itself is, is not a great option but think about it this way if we were to pull the front end of this car up and let's say that this is of course an extreme angle but let's say the the chassis was sitting right here so we've pretty much rotated our caster to 90 degrees. If you notice, chassis lines here, you're only moving the top of the tires. You're, you're leaning the tires in this case. So you're not actually steering the car. And again, this is an extreme angle uh, or extreme circumstance just to try and make you realize what it's doing. Um, so you have less steering because you're leaning the top in and out versus this way, which is the way the car actually works, you would be turning the wheels. So you're bleeding the front of the wheels, which is causing the car to turn. So the more that we kick this up, think about the whole front suspension rotating up here, um, the less steering you're actually gonna have because it's gonna take your point of pivot and move it up or point of rotation rather because your pivot's going to be still be back here but your point of rotation you're not rotating this point anymore you're rotating more up here hopefully that makes a little sense for you um which is why you have less steering coming off the corner um when it or it responsive is responsiveness overall if you add that um, that caster now then where that gets a little complicated is you have pro squat, anti squat, which is rear of the car. Then you have anti dive and kick up, which is the front of the car. And the way this affects the overall handling of the car is um, basically the way the chassis loads and unloads going into the corner. When you're on the brakes, the natural tendency is for the car to nose dive. Now then, two things affect how that car is going to nose dive or not nose dive. One of them is the uh, anti dive or kick up, and the other is going to be the pro squat or rear or a uh, anti squat, which is rear. Um, when you think about it this way, um, you're really transferring weight. So if you have a situation where the nose of the car isn't hooking up going into the corner, you can add a little bit of kick up. And by adding kick up, what it's going to do is it's going to allow the front to accept more weight. If you think about it like a slinky in your hand, if your hands are flat and you're bouncing a slinky back and forth, there's a little more resistance. Now, if you move your hands up so they're closer to on the same plane with each other and you bounce that slinky back and forth it bounces a little easier because they're working on the same plane so let's think about it this way the way you would adjust anti-dive and kick up is and it's hard to see in here in this car it's going to be these arm mounts which any car it's going to be the essentially the angle of the arm, how flat the arm is in relation to the chassis. Now this car is set up flat. However, if I took that front of this arm 
and pick the front of the arm up, what I'm going to do is actually give myself some kick up. Ultimately, that also increases my overall caster angle. But what it does is it allows more weight to transfer to the front of this arm because it's now on a, a more even plane with the rear of the car than before. So it's going to allow more weight to transfer over the nose. So going into the corner now, if I add some kick up here, what it's going to do is more weight's going to transfer over to the nose under that braking. Now in re result of that is also going to be coming out of the corner. It's going to be more capable of transferring that weight back to the rear. So essentially you're adding kick up here is going to allow the car to transfer weight back and forth. Now it's going to accept more up front then it's really going to work towards kicking it to the rear. So it's more of a, a front end tuning, but it can be used to change the way the car changes or, or pitches its weight to the rear of the car. Um, next is you got to think about caster here as well. Because what, again, what you're doing is you're throwing the car forward into the corner, adding that kick up. When you do that, it's of course going to change the way the caster works because now you're changing the load of the front end of this chassis or the total angle of the chassis in regards to the plane of the racing surface that you're on. So as you roll into a corner and that nose dives, you're now standing that pivot point or your caster back up, which is going to change the way the car rotates into the corner because it's going to have a more responsive feel now. And then again, when you come off the corner, because you've added that, ultimately increasing your overall caster, you're going to have less steering coming off of the corner typically. Now then, you also have what is called pro squat and anti squat. Same tuning aid, except it's in the rear. And it works a little reverse. If you pick up the rear arm of this, or rear mounting spot of this arm, it's going to change the angle of the arm in relation to the chassis. Adding uh, pro squat in this case is by pulling this uh, rear mount up, you're going to let more weight transfer to the rear of the car coming off. Again, ultimately affecting the angle of the chassis in relation to the plane of the racing surface. Um, which again, because the rear squatting, you're going to lose more caster up front which is going to mean that you're going to have less steering coming out of the corner. Really good tuning aid for somebody who can't pick the throttle up coming off the corner. Um, because again, you're going to, one, transfer more weight to the rear with pro squat. Two, you're going to change the angle of the chassis in relation to the racing surface, which is going to increase your caster coming off of the corner. And by doing such, you're going to lose some of your steering. Um, again, these are some extreme examples of how caster is affecting the steering. And I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here by changing your movement point from here up to here or six degrees uh, in some cases eight degrees which is pretty much what I'm running in this chassis right here because I've got two degrees of um, uh, of uh, kick up and then uh, six degrees worth of caster um, it's a little extreme but in the particular class that I'm running this chassis in um, it's what I need to uh, try and get me to hook up um, but by doing that, I'm losing steering as that shot or the, uh, the top of my uh, steering block is moved back because it's picking that steering point uh, of movement from here up to say here, um, changing it by overall by eight degrees. And 
actually in a lot of cases even more than that because by the time I, I had my pro squat added coming off the corner it's actually the chassis is no longer level anyways uh, which is going to increase that so um, it, it's basically a dynamic setting for um, for your caster um, you've got your your caster blocks which is you know under normal circumstances that's just a, a static caster because it, it's not changing then you add in your pro squat anti-squat or your kick up or anti-dive and then you have a reactive or dynamic caster going on there um so you know pro squat anti-squat um kick up and anti-dive those are going to really transfer weight front to rear the car and change how the chassis rolls or where the pivot is for or not really roll but um, where the pivot is for that weight moving front to rear um, as you go into and out of a corner um, again you got to kind of think of how the car is loading you go into a corner your front end goes down and uh, when your front end goes down you're actually going to uh, change this overall chassis feel so uh, or overall chassis angle in relation to the ground uh, just a few things um few ideas that i have because a lot of people just l read the manual um which is a great source for tuning help but really it helps us more if we understand what the chassis is doing and why these changes actually work i myself even though i've been racing for 20 years i find myself getting out there um I just get caught up in the moment of things. We're, we're trying to spot in between our classes. Um, you just really run out of time. So mentally, you, you can't process some of these changes fast enough. But if we really think about the way the car is working and, and handling, um, we can kind of take some of those ideas uh, and, and really throw at the car. You know, your car's got too much steering coming off the corner. We could add a little pro squat back here. Um, cause the weight to transfer over to the rear a little more efficiently and easily. Um, and ultimately, that's going to hook the rear up.